Well, thank you, band. That was amazing, as always. You guys are great. Uh, well, today we have something special. Uh, I've asked my good friend Tom to come here today, and we're going to share some helpful tips about having a quiet time or a devotional time with God. Uh, Tom said something to me about a year and a half ago that really made me think, wow, Tom really has a strong relationship with God, and he has some, uh, some things that I think are going to help us today. So thanks for being here today, Tom. No problem. Thanks for inviting me along, Jeremy. Um, yeah, what I told you was just a structure to my day and uh, my devotional time with God. And I hope maybe by sharing this, we can give some people some ideas on how they can structure their devotional time. Yeah, that, that's, that's really great. And a, and a good point to make is that um, there's not really a wrong way of doing devotional time with God. Um, you can do it in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, just whenever you have free time, when the kids aren't all over you. Uh, and you can really just kind of have some time to yourself and God. Um, so we hope to be able to share some of those tips today. Uh, one thing that me and Tom both do mm -hmm. in common is that we use the YouVersion app. Um, it's available on both the Apple Store and on Google Store. Um, take a look at it. This is what it looks like there. But it's very helpful. I think it's the one that is most used around the entire world, yeah. uh, most likely. Uh, so Tom, tell us, uh, how, how do you go through your day whenever you first wake up? Do you do your devotional in the morning? Do you do it at night? When do you do it? Kind of give us some examples of what you do. Um, initially when I wake up, I have my phone with me and rather than look at my messages and <laughs> you know Facebook, I go to the YouVersion app and I look at the verse of the day. It takes a couple of seconds. Um, I'll read it. And then I put the phone down, I'll go and um, wash face, brush teeth, now come and do a prayer at the bedside. Um, and right after my prayer, I'll stay at the side of the bed and just listen in silence and contemplation for, for maybe a minute uh, before I get up and continue my day. And then later I'll come back to my phone and sit down with a cup of tea and, and start reading the verse of the day. And from there I can go through and I quite like to look at the story which is attached to that. Mm -hmm. And on that which is the top of the home screen, you click on it and you can read the verse of the day. Um, and you'll also get to watch a video by a well-known pastor. It takes about a minute to watch that video and it's full of good information and their thoughts on that verse. Oh, yeah, that's, that's really helpful. I, I know that um, there's some things that I can pull out of there. Something that stuck out to me is that you you pray and then you spend about a minute or so yeah. listening to God. And I think that that's something that a lot of us don't do. We're, we're all in a hurry and we just like, we pray and then we just run and leave. And we, <laughs> and I feel like sometimes God was like, uh, I was going to say something to you. Yeah. And then you just left and ran. Um, so I, I know that that really impressed me about your relationship with God is that you, you pray and then you listen. Uh, because a lot of times I feel like we just don't listen. Um, so that was really helpful. Uh, tell me about um, a YouVersion app and, and kind of they have plans in them that you can choose. Yeah. How do you choose your plans that you're going to do? Well, the great thing with the, uh, with the plans is that you can either search for particular um, things you want to look at or you can just scroll through them. Uh, it's like your menu and pick out one that's relevant to you. So is it done by topics or how, I guess probably by love or marriage? Yeah or faith, or worry, or fear. Mm. So it's done by topics and you can just choose one based on that. And I, how long does a typical plan last? Well, you can choose your plan to last from one or two days to probably up to a month, depending on what the topic is and what you want to cover. Uh, I've done plans that have lasted two or three days with a friend, which is quite mm. good timeline. And I've done other ones that have lasted 29 days um, on particular subjects. Yeah, so tell me a little bit more about how you do a plan with others. What does that mean? Well, what you can do, and I find it quite a good way to introduce people to verses in the Bible, um, because a plan will take you into particular verses relevant to that area. So I did one recently on anxiety with a friend. The plan lasts four days. And as well as the devotional part of it, you can then be led into verses that are relevant to that plan. So the Bible, as you know, is vast and it's quite a difficult subject to get into, but these plans really help you to um, hone in on what it is that you want to, to hear from God. Yeah, that's a really great point about what a devotional does because the Bible is such a big book and I think it's intimidating for a lot of people. And so 
by doing a devotional that's on worry, it'll, it'll go into the Bible and say, here are the verses on worry and, and yeah. on fear. And that can just, it makes it easier. It makes it more um, easily digestible and, and, and to, be, to help us do it. And that's a great point. Uh, for me, I, I do something very similar. I, I do the verse of the day when I wake mm -hmm. up um, and I'll do a plan the same. And some things that have helped me over the years as well is um, sometimes I will pull out the, the actual Bible. Most of the time I do it on my phone, honestly. Yeah. But sometimes I'll pull out the Bible and I'll, I'll open it up and I will read the verses that are on the phone, but I actually read them in the Bible. And what that does for me is it, it slows down the process a little bit. And it, allow, and it makes me think a little bit more uh, whenever I do that. Um, so I would encourage you to occasionally pull out your Bible and, and do your devotional from the Bible as opposed to just always doing it on your phone. Um, so that, that is something that's yeah. helped me. Um, the, the plan that has probably helped me the most is the Bible in a year. Um, it's done by the guys that make the Alpha course in the UK. It's quite a famous course. And it takes you through the entire Bible in one year. So reading a part of the Old Testament, a part of the New Testament, and then a Psalm or a Proverb every day. Um, so that's been great. Um, another thing that I've actually done is, um, because that does take quite a while yeah. to accomplish that, um, even each day, that'll take it, you know, a good 30 minutes of, of, of devotional time. And so if you want to make it shorter, a way you can do it is you can read just maybe the, the Psalm or the Proverb and the New Testament portions and, and leave out the Old Testament portions. And that can kind of speed it up. And you can do the whole New Testament and Psalms and Proverbs in a year if you have less time. So that's just something else that I've done um, as well over the past. Um, is there anything in particular that uh, you've been doing lately that you that has been really helpful for you? Um, yeah, as I say, I like to share the plans with friends. Um, there's two levels. One is what you want for yourself. So quite often you might pick a longer plan. Um, and then when you want to introduce a friend to the plans, it's quite good to share it over three or four days. Um, yeah. That's what I that's what I prefer to do, and then it gives a good discussion point each day. And for me, I'm I'm a get it completed kind of guy. So <laughs> a one a one year study would uh, be tough for me. It's really it, it takes so a lot of discipline. When, when I see four to seven days, I'm good with that. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point. Uh, one other thing that I do want to point out is. Um, a lot of times we, we can read a verse and we're like, what does that actually mm. mean? Um, and what, what are they saying? And so w one thing that I do occasionally as well is if I'm a little un unsure of what this verse actually means, um, I will go to a commentary. And a commentary is basically uh, someone who has studied the scriptures. Yeah. They've looked at the, the, the time that it was written, who it was written to, and the original language. And they'll, they'll go deeper into that particular verse. And so I will, I will Google uh, mm -hmm. the, that particular verse in a commentary, which will give me greater insight as to what they're meaning with, um, by that actual verse. Um, so that has been something else that's been helpful for me. Well, any last closing thoughts, Tom, of, of some tips that you could give? No, someone? I just think that's a great tip. Um, initially, when you read a verse in the Bible, you might take it literally, um, but it was written in the context and the time, and it's quite good to copy and paste it and look a little bit more into it and see what other people think about it. And sometimes it answers your questions regarding that verse. And it's a good way to, to begin to understand uh, the Bible and uh, understand the life of Jesus. Yeah, well, well, well thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, thank you guys uh, for being here. I hope that some of these tips have helped you today. It'll help you in the future. Uh, well, thanks for being here. I hope you've had a great service. Uh, tonight at 6 p.m. we're going to be on Facebook Live and YouTube Live, so please go there, comment, help, share it, help us reach as many people as possible. Well, thanks for being here. We'll see you on social media throughout the week. Have a great rest of your weekend. Take care. Thank you.